Welcome back to American Agenda. The Biden administration will make cuts to the Navy. Get that, which could impact the race in the battleground state of Virginia. For the latest, let's go live to the Pentagon, where national correspondent Logan Raddick has more on this developing story. Logan. Well, Bob and Katrina, President Biden is under fire from lawmakers over what they call an inadequate defense budget, and they're citing cuts that will be coming to the U.S. Navy. Now, in the fiscal year budget for 2025, it only provides funding to construct six new Battle Force Flea ships, and only one of those ships is a Virginia-class submarine. Now, there have traditionally been two Virginia-class submarines, or at least two, included on the Pentagon's annual budget. Now, Virginia Congresswoman Jen Kiggins says, quote, this cut will significantly impact Hampton Roads and Newport News shipbuilding, one of the two sites that construct the Virginia-class submarines. And Congresswoman Kiggins goes on to say that the cuts will also slow the procurement of Fort class aircraft carriers, quote, at a time when our Navy is in dire need of increasing our fleet size to compete with China. Now, Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia is also the only builder for those Ford class carriers, and the Navy's fleet size will shrink by a total of nine in fiscal year of 2025 due in part to decommissioning of 19 ships. And the defense budget includes a 6.3% decrease in funding for Navy aircraft procurement. Now, Baba Katrina and related news, the Navy released a fact sheet late yesterday, and they showed that all of the major shipbuilding programs are delayed by at least one to three years. Back to you. All right. Wow. Logan Raddick, thanks so much for that report. Appreciate it. That's disheartening to hear. And joining us now to discuss President Biden's military cutbacks, former Army Special Forces Green Beret and candidate for Congress in Virginia, Derek Anderson, plus former Undersecretary of Defense and former U.S. Secretary of Veteran Affairs, Robert Wilkie. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Derek, I'm going to start with you. We know you're running for Congress in Virginia, so I want to get your reaction to President Biden reducing Navy funding and shipbuilding in your state. I don't think voters are going to like to hear this. No, that's exactly right, Bob. Thanks you all again for having me. But uh, Congresswoman Kagan is exactly right. You know, not only in her district, we have a naval installation here in the 7th Congressional District here in Virginia. And I can tell you that if we look at recruiting across uh, the military right now, uh, when the Biden administration is telling our potential recruits that they're not willing to put the money uh, where their mouth is in order to make sure that they have the necessary equipment, uh, or ships, or tanks, or automobile, what it, what have you. Uh, it's not a great recruiting tool. And this is not the first time, Bob, that the Biden administration has done this. Back in October of last year, Secretary Austin and the Secretary of the Army said that they were going to cut our special operations funding by 10%. I mean, if we take a look at that, that's absolutely ridiculous, considering the fact that our special operations community typically is at the tip of the spear whenever we have these conflicts, and especially since October 7th. We've had 100 plus attacks on our installations overseas. This is just not a great message by the Biden administration at all. Secretary, you can uh, address that topic if you want, but I also want to shift gears to the war in Ukraine. Secretary of State Antony Blinken had this to say at a NATO conference in Paris just yesterday. On Ukraine, we discussed the imperative of continuing to support Ukraine so that it can effectively defend itself against the ongoing Russian aggression. Uh, that's for today, but also to make sure through the work that we're doing to help Ukraine build uh, a strong military for the future, to attract private sector investment so that it builds up its economy. Secretary, your reaction to what he's suggesting there? Well, he's always inspiring, isn't he? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't want to follow him into into battle. Look, the problem we have right now is that the Biden administration and Mr. Blinken uh, in particular, they've never gone to the American people to say why it is in America's interest to help the Ukrainians fight Russia, not why it's Europe, Europe's interest, not why it's Ukraine's interest. It's the same thing that's going on in the Middle East. And I'll, I'll, I'll diverge for a minute, Katrina. Yesterday, we had the spectacle of a spineless statement by the Biden administration after the Israelis took out 
the senior leadership of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. The first thing this administration did was send a note to the Ayatollah saying, we had nothing to do with it. We didn't have any forewarning. That's the kind of thing that is leading to more conflict, being it, be it in Ukraine, be it in Yemen, be it in Israel, now with the potential for a fight between Venezuela and Guyana. Everything is happening on the watch of Joe Biden and his so-called professionals, because everything they say evokes and brings forth weakness in the eyes of America's enemies. Derek, why do you think they're so soft with Iran? I have my own theories. I know everybody does. I think it may be political for votes to appease a large portion of his base here in the United States so he can get elected again in November. What say you about that? Well, I mean, the only thing that I can rationalize, Bob, is we see some of the individuals in Congress on the, the far left, especially some of these very progressive people. Uh, you know, I do think that, to your point, that it's a little bit of pandering to them. Uh, we, But we've seen the Biden administration just lackluster on their responses over and over again. Remember, in Afghanistan, you know, a lot of people were telling the Biden administration that we need to make sure we have this withdrawal under control. And we saw what happened and we saw the death of, you know, 13 service members. Uh, we see how they've handled October 7th, that when when Israel was attacked by Hamas, the Biden administration was pretty stagnant and quiet for about two weeks about everything. So uh, I think the response is just uh, a day late and a dollar short continuously over and over again. And, and, and to the secretary's point, um, they also are giving warnings to Iran when we're actually going to do any sort of attack. So that, again, doesn't do uh, much in the eyes of the individuals that are being bombed and hit with these suicide uh, drones uh, daily uh, overseas. It certainly does not sound like an effective military strategy, to be sure. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Derek Anderson, Robert Wilkie, we appreciate your analysis. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, coming up, more delays in